Hello there, my name is Ludi and you probably know me from my multiple Victoria 3 Prussia videos. I am collaborating today with Paradox Interactive to explain how wars work and how to win them in Victoria 3 Patch 1.5 and Colossus of the South DLC. We will be covering navies, the best army composition to have and how to combine both armies and navies to win your wars. Navies operate in a similar fashion to armies as in you can create individual fleets each with their own admirals of up to four statistics that determine the fleet limit manpower morale upkeep offensive defensive average and organization and attrition and you do have two types of units the light ships and the capital ships in order to have an effective fleet it's vital that you have enough light ships to cover your capital ships otherwise you will have penalties applied to your organization as you progress you unlock new types of ships and you will be able to easily switch over to the newer models by clicking the upgrade model for either of the two ship types. Admirals have multiple orders that they can give out each with their own benefit and debuff. Interception or coordinated interception aims at intercepting enemy ships, who would have thought right? Whilst the raid convoys targets your enemy's convoys crippling their civilian fleet and the economy in the process. Escort convoys and organized merchant convoys defend your own convoys from getting raided by by the enemy in turn. Now that we have the basics down, let's get ready for our very first war by merging our armies and navies into a more cohesive fighting force. For our armies, it is recommended to have more infantry than your enemy's army's infantry force, as well as have enough artillery and cavalry units for support and to deal that extra bit of damage. Make sure that you have enough armies to cover all fronts and potential naval invasions that you will be doing. For your fleet, similarly, we want enough light ships more than our capital ships and we will position the fleets in the right nodes to inflict the most damage to our enemies' economies as well as have a fleet at the ready for naval invasions. We also want to make sure that we are producing the equipment needed for our units during the war as the demand will skyrocket so we can, of course, queue up some more factories for arms, ammunition, and the raw materials needed to build said equipment. Depending on what type of player you are, you can have all of your generals on advancing in your fronts or defending or a mixture of both. Personally, I'm a big fan of the more aggressive playstyle. The most important part of any war, however, is using both our fleet and armies in a combined effort to win the war sooner rather than later. As such, we'll be doing a naval invasion to start a new front and divide the enemy's forces as now they have to send units to plug the holes in their defenses from which where our naval invasion occurred. You will win your wars by making the enemy's war score lower faster than yours and reaching minus 100 before yours does. The fastest way to achieve this is by capturing the war target and you can issue the targeted state as your strategic objective, thus letting your generals know what they should be pushing for. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel as up next we will be covering the economy and government, the metaphorical body of any country in Victoria 3.